Design Twitter. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent System Design mock interview. My name is Kevin, and on today's show, we have Josefa. We're going to be doing a system design technical interview question. But before we get started, Josefa, do you mind just telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Josefa. I'm an engineering manager um, at Facebook. Uh, prior to Facebook, I was at PayPal uh, and Wellfront. Excellent. Thanks for your time today. So we're going to be doing a system design mock interview, and this is what I like to ask. Design Twitter. Okay. Uh, all right. So Twitter um, is a two-sided network. So you have uh, people creating tweets and people consuming um, tweets. So uh, given that, let's uh, I, I'll I'll break up the system diagram into into these two halves. So let's start with with some of the core uh, requirements that we would uh, we would want want to tackle. Um, the first one being um, creating creating uh, a tweet. I think that's fundamental um, to the to the system. The second second one I would I would think here is uh, for someone who's following different people, uh, being able to view all the tweets on their timeline. So right, viewing or you can say generating the timeline for the user. Um, the last thing I, I would want to kind of look at is uh, being able to follow uh, people and uh, you know uh, interact with with tweets so in terms of uh, replies or you know the like uh, uh, symbols so these are the core requirements we are looking at um, in in terms of some non functional requirements Um, I would I would say that um, one one thing we, we need to look at is that Twitter um, is a is going to be a read read heavy system so there will be more people reading and 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 viewing the tweets tweets than than writing so we would want to optimize for reads uh, and the other thing we would want to kind of optimize for is um, influencer influencers so basically someone like uh, you know Lady Gaga or uh, Justin Bieber kind of writing a tweet would uh, we want to make sure that if, if they they create a tweet uh, it it doesn't bring the system system down yeah this makes sense for like a p0 but if we were to make like a like maybe P1 or P2 requirements or non-functional requirements, what else might you add? Sure. I think another thing you would, you would want to add uh, over here is, is high availability uh, over consistency. So by, by, by that I mean is that you want the system to be very highly available versus that if, if a user created a tweet, you not, need not necessarily have the tweet available to everyone to consume uh, in, in real time. There could be a few seconds lag between a person uh, creating a tweet uh, to everyone being able to kind of uh, read and interact uh, with the with the tweet. And I would say eventually low, low latency in terms of especially, uh, you know, when it comes to generation of the timeline. So those are the few no other non-functional requirements that I would I would look at. Okay, and are, like if, if you had more time for requirements, uh, were there any more that you would have besides creating, viewing, and following people? Um, I think you could you could uh, look at uh, you know generate uh, adding a more uh, videos, uh, images to tweets, um, making the tweets more uh, graphically uh, rich. You can you can look at uh, other things as maybe editing a tweet. I know Twitter doesn't offer that, but that's like one of the most requested uh, features. You could um, look at uh, retweeting uh, with a comment without a comment. So there could be those could be the other features that you you would want to add uh, on on the system. 
Cool, yeah, that sounds good. So let's stick with what you have here and maybe you can tell me what you think would be included in the MVP that we're gonna design today. Right, so I think in the MVP, I, I look at these three, three areas where we have creation of the tweet, um, generation of the timeline, and basically being able to follow people and interacting um, with the with the tweet. So I, I like to kick it off with with a simple um, you know API uh, API construct over here. I think uh, with creation of a tweet, it's it's uh, like you 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 could have a post uh, with a slash you know create um, slash a tweet uh, endpoint. And essentially the idea here is that in this post, the, the body of the post would essentially uh, contain, contain the tweet, right? So over here, you could think of it that the text over here is the tweet, tweet itself, uh, which, which kind of you're, you're sending to your server, right? Then the next endpoint you would, you would look at is basically getting all your tweets, right? So you could, you could think of it as slash home or slash, uh, get tweets so basically this is a get request the response over here would be um, you know in a, in a paginated manner let's say the first 20 top tw top 20 tweets on that come onto your um, timeline the the other other endpoints you would you would look at is when you want to follow people so you you would say follow and then uh, you you could pass in the user or maybe if this is a post in in the in the body itself you pass in the the follower id over here so this is basically who you want to follow right and and your user id kind of is sent as a part part of the of the he header uh, the, a, a similar endpoint over here on the on the tweet one um, you could say is that um you 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 like a tweet um with another similar one is you you respond um you reply you reply to a to a tweet right so over here your your body um again is the the text is your response to the to the tweet and um, of course you need to kind of know what the what the tweet or the tweet id id is there right so that'll kind of tell you which which tweet you are uh, responding responding to so these are at a high level like these four apis that you that you have um, next I'll, I'll get into like a high level system overview of what the system actually um, looks like so let's start off uh, with creation of a tweet, um, so basically you you have your users over here. Um, with any any large system in this what scale of Twitter is, you you tend to have uh, load balancers in the middle because it's a it's a distributed a system geographically. Um, you'll having multiple hundreds, if not thousands, of servers serving serving the millions of users, right? So you, you have load balancers. Now, in, in terms of creating the tweet, you are essentially what, what you are saying over here is that you, you are um, um, doing a post, post over here, right? So you, you are, it's, a, it's an HTTP post, you are calling the, this endpoint, right? So there are um, a bunch of, um, servers over here which you can call your API servers handling the handling these endpoints right so basically anything to do do with the with the tweets whether it's creation uh, replies likes everything um, to do with the with the tweets would essentially be uh, handled by by these APIs right these Got it. these serv ser servers right so anything with slash tweets um, you know, would would kind of be be handled by by these uh, servers here. Now, how would you distribute? How would you distribute the load from the load balancers to all the different? Like, let's say you have n servers. How would you know which server to send it to? 
Right. So I think there are uh, a few systems mechanisms over here. So so something as simple as a round robin uh, mechanism could work. You could look at um, some kind of a consistent hashing system where every server is hash and then you round robin on the hash. You can also distribute this geographically. So let's say I am in the US and I uh, send a post to create a tweet. So the load balancer would route this to any of the US data centers where let's say somebody in Asia or somebody in EU um, is, is doing a similar action. Uh, they would probably get routed to a data center which is close to their geography. So you could kind of choose to do them in one of these uh, n number of ways. Cool, makes sense. Cool. Uh, moving on, so basically this would kind of create the tweet and we would have um, uh, a SQL database over here where all your all the users tweets are stored right so you you have your users um, and you have your tweets right so these are your main two main two entities in terms of the of of the database that that you 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 have uh, the next uh, thing I would want to look at and I can get into the database details a little a little later on um, the other thing I want to now now tackle is the generation of of tweets. So if you if you look at it, one very simple brute force way is that in your database you have your tweets table. For a given user, if they come to the to your to the home or they call the get tweets endpoints, one simple way is that there is a query that scans the entire tweets tables and removes the, the most top, like if you're looking, looking at chronological order, um, top 20 tweets or this n number of tweets for this particular user. The, though it's simple in implementation, the downside to that is as your tweet table gr grows over time, these queries will get very expensive and will cause very high latency uh, in terms of getting, getting the timeline. So to keep the latency low uh, in terms of viewing uh, viewing the timeline and we want to optimize for for reads there has to be some kind of pre computation that we that we need to do in terms of the generation of the timeline um, itself so what what we would do here is that as tweets are coming coming in uh, there is correspondingly a a timeline generation service basically what what this service would would do is that map all the users and and we can i can optimize uh, this service for generating the timelines for your most frequent user so let's say your your daily active users right so you want to kind of generate timeline for your daily or your week, weekly active users like users let's say who are viewing twitter once a month or once every six months we maybe do not compute the timelines for them because that will just be a waste of uh, computational power so let's say we are optimizing for a daily daily active users whenever a tweet tweet comes in along with storing it into into a database we are passing this tweet to your uh, timeline generation service Basically, what this timeline generation service is, is, is doing for every user, it's looking at that tweet and saying that does this tweet belong to this user's, user's timeline, uh, right? Because does it belong to one of the people that this user is following? If yes, it adds it to the, to the person's timelines on, on the top. So it's kind of a, uh, a stack where it's keep, it keeps adding the tweets to the, to the top. So this is like your... Um, timeline generation and uh, as I mentioned that we we do not do this for all the users we we, we want to do this for only our most act daily active active users now uh, as one of the things I, I also mentioned is that if we want to optimize for influencers the the downside to this uh, kind of system is that somebody like Lady Gaga who probably has 50, 60 million followers, if she does a tweet, you are essentially recalculating the timeline for 
50 million people uh, for that one one tweet which uh, computationally is very heavy and very redundant in nature so basically what you do is for these set of influencers uh, who have this high bar uh, of, of users you don't do the timeline you don't update the timeline of those people over there but if when uh, this is basically requested by by a user so let's say another user over here um, is is requesting is requesting the tweet over here so they're doing doing the get slash tweets basically what the load balancer is doing is it's it's calling this timeline generation service while the timeline generation service gets the request out at runtime it will basically uh, you know take something from your influencers uh, service and um, add that data to your response on the fly right so while the service is is responding back it will um, add this data on the fly or at runtime uh, and and send out the the timeline to the to the users so this way you're not populating the timeline for these large set of users for these one of tweets sent by uh, uh, influencers uh, the next requirement uh, in terms of non functional and be before you move on to the next one yeah. before you move on to the next one Sure. Uh, you know, you've you've talked about all these different types of users, highly active users, maybe less active users. There's also influencers or celebrities you want to keep in mind. It sounds like there's two ways that you can generate someone's timeline, like a pull or push method. Um, and I, I can we can clarify this if, if you need to. But can you talk to me about whether you'd recommend a pull method or a push method for getting someone's timeline? Yeah, I think it, it needs to be. Um and a hybrid approach um, over here. So uh, somebody who's your uh, very daily active user who, who's visiting uh, your, your app or other website very frequently, I think a push model for them would, would be more effective. But someone who's uh, visiting Twitter not so, not so frequently after a long time, I think we would, a pull model for them would be more effective because pushing content to them when they're not accessing it would, would not make sense. So we would kind of want, want to look at analytics data to see which users you would want to push data to, whereas which users would pull data depending on their usage. Got it, cool, that makes sense. Yeah, let's, let's move on to the next requirement. Yeah, so the other requirement over here was uh, around high availability as well. So as, as I mentioned, a lot of these services over here would, would be replicated. So you, you don't have one server, you have multiple servers uh, uh, doing this. And in, in terms of our, our database as well, right? You don't have one database, you have uh, multiple instances in some kind of a master slave configuration where, where you know, these uh, data databases can be, uh, oops, what happened here? Uh, are, are are duplicated here, right? So basically, as you tweets go out, they they get kind of duplicated over here. So like these are copies of your uh, of your master master database here. So this kind of makes sure that even if something something goes down in in one of the data centers or one of the so uh, databases, you you can um, uh, have uh, backup backup copies. Uh, stored. Uh, the last thing uh, I wanted to kind of chat about was around uh, the interaction with the tweets. It follows um, a very similar process where essentially you, the users are sending a, a post on the tweet like or you know um, slash tweet uh, ID slash reply um, endpoints and essentially the idea idea here is that along along with the payload they get forwarded to the load balancers and kind of um, get handled by the API servers over here. So this follows the same uh, mechanism as that of a 
of of the regular regular tweet and one important consideration here that that we are encountering in the use cases that the tweets are just pure pure text we have not accounted for use cases where the tweets could be an image or a video uh, we would kind of need to have a separate um, kind of a, a storage to store those uh, images and videos and then push them onto some kind of cdn uh, for uh, faster access got it yep that makes sense uh, let's say that there's a scenario where the PM comes to you and says, hey, we have an 80-20 scenario here where 80% um, of the users are interacting with 20% of the tweets. Is there anything that you would change with the system design here? Mm, yeah, so I think what, what you would want to do is maybe in your timeline generation service, uh, the initial assumption is that we would uh, arrange the tweets in a chronological order. So you would want to want to tweak that algorithm where you're not only looking at um, the chronological order, but you're also looking at the interaction um, on, on the tweet itself. So you kind of have a weighted weighted system in, in which your um, timeline is getting, getting generated. So the tweets that have more higher interaction, higher engagement automatically bubble up to the top of your of the user's user's timeline. Cool. And how about in terms of like storage or caching? Mm, for the tweets itself? Yeah, let's say that there's like a very small subset of tweets, but it's very popular, it's accessed very often. Is there yeah, anything I think... that you, you would change in the... And you, you don't have to draw just for the sake of time, but maybe just verbally tell me what you change. I, I think maybe those tweets most likely would, would would be some viral tweets or belonging to some influencers so you would you would want to probably in your service over here cache those tweets and then inject them into into the users timelines at at runtime again so i think that's that's something what i would i, I would i would look at generally what you're looking at is trying to cache the timeline itself and not per se the individual individual tweet got it cool thank you so this is the conclusion for our mock interview just for the sake of time. I know that this is just an MVP and you know, if we had more time, we can go through the other requirements that you had mentioned earlier. Um, before we wrap up the video, do you mind telling the audience maybe like one or two tips or, or maybe any sort of um, advice that you would give someone who's interviewing for a system design interview? Sure. Uh, I think uh, a couple of things here. A system design interview is generally a very open-ended uh, question. There is no wrong answer there's no right answer there's a particular approach to solving um, the problem as long as you are able to validate or justify why you're making certain decisions what is the reason behind them uh, that should be be good enough and also for these kind of systems you don't necessarily the expectation is not that you need to in 30 minutes 45 minutes design something what twitter or facebook has designed over course of years so that's not the goal for this um, these uh, type of questions. The idea here is to kind of gauge how you are able to able to think. So not getting bobbed down in the low level details, but being able to think holistically of at a high level how the system will operate, and uh, not worrying about what the exact right uh, answer for the system is. As long as you are able to uh, justify and quantify your uh, answers, that should be good enough. Yeah, absolutely. And especially uh, with how vague or ambiguous these questions are, the interviewer wants to see how you can take those and then scope it into something that you can cover within 20, 30 minutes or however long the interview is. Thanks, Josefa, for your time. And for the viewer, good luck with your upcoming system design interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.